Good morning. Welcome to morning prayer at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church, Tequesta, Florida, on this Tuesday, the 12th of December, 2023. My name is Ian Anderson, and I'm a member of the Daily Offices team of this church, the ministry that brings you morning prayer every weekday morning at 9 a.m. exclusively on Zoom. If you are tuning in later, you can always find our morning prayer services on our communications channels, Facebook, YouTube, and of course, the prayer page of goodsheponline.org. So good morning, Joan. Good morning, Pam. Good morning, Julie and Pete. And good morning, Sherry. So glad you could join me this morning on this decidedly gloomy morning, this morning for morning prayer. So last week being the very first week of Advent, we uh, neglected to commemorate saints because we wanted to give Advent the center stage as the first week. And we missed some good ones. Um, Saint Nick, for, for example, and Thomas Merton, uh, but uh, we will get to them next year as Advent rolls backwards uh, from uh, this year. It was its latest date. So we'll at least get Thomas Burton next, next, next year. But today we, uh, we uh, commemorate two uh, French people, Francis de Salle, Bishop, and Jane de Chantel, a monastic. Uh, Francis de Salle, uh, lived during uh, the time of the um, Protestant Reformation, and he was actually appointed to be Bishop of Geneva, which was a Calvinist stronghold. He was from the Savoy district of France, which extends basically from Geneva in the north down to, um, down to uh, Nice in the south. Uh, it's, in the, uh, it's in the French Alps. Uh, and uh, he, uh, his, his motto was, if you, he who preaches with love preaches effectively. And uh, he was able to, um, he was able to prevail and uh, convert many people back to Catholicism. Uh, Jane de Chantel uh, was uh, a, a woman who uh, married a noble, a nobleman, uh, the Baron of Chantel, but she was widowed at 28 left with four children, and she took a vow of chastity and thereafter became a monastic, and uh, she, was in, she inspired many as well. She was originally from Dijon, that we associate with mustard, of course. <laughs> so we will be commemorating both this morning during our service. So why don't we take a moment to compose ourselves, and then we'll begin our service of morning prayer right to on this Tuesday, December 12th, 2023. Watch, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. 
Our invitatory psalm this morning is Psalm 100, Jubilate Deo. We shall say the Jubilate together in unison. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. The Psalms appointed for this morning are Psalms number 26 and 28. We shall say the Psalms together in unison with a slight pause between them. <clears throat> Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind. For your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not, not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Do not sweep me away with sinners, nor my life with those who thirst for blood, whose hands are full of evil plots and their right hand full of bribes. As for me, I will live with integrity. Redeem me, O Lord, and have pity on me. My foot stands on level ground. In the full assembly, I will bless the Lord. O Lord, I call to you, my rock, do not be deaf to my cry, lest if you do not hear me, I become like that those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my prayer when I cry out to you, when I lift up my hands to your holy of holies. Do not snatch me away, with the wicked or with the evildoers, who speak peaceably with their neighbors while strife is in their hearts. Repay them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their actions. According to the work of their hands, repay them and give them their just deserts. They have no understanding of the Lord's doings, nor of the works of his hands. Therefore, he will break them down and not build them up. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my prayer. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts, trusts in him, and I have been helped. Therefore my heart dances for joy, and in my song will I praise him. The Lord is the strength of his people, a safe refuge for his anointed. Save your people and bless your inheritance shepherd them, and carry them forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So in today's first reading, we come to the climax of the book of Amos, and this recounts the prophet's confrontation with the priest of Bethel, Amaziah. So listen in. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, 
O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Betha, for it is the king's sanctuary and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman, a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock. And the Lord said to me, go, prophesy to my people Israel. Now, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. You say, do not prophesy against Israel and do not preach against the house of Isaac. Therefore, thus says the Lord, your wife shall become a prostitute in the city, and your sons and your daughters shall fall by the sword, and your land shall be parceled out by line. You yourself shall die in an unclean land, and Israel shall surely go into exile away from its land. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We respond to Amos's harsh words to Amaziah with the second song of Isaiah, which we shall say together in unison. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord, and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. In today's second re reading, we continue from yesterday to hear the opening words from the book of the Revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ to John. In, this, in today's reading, John identifies himself and his target audience, seven churches on the western edge of Asia Minor, and begins to describe his revelation. Incidentally, Patmos, from where John writes, is a small island just off the coast of Asia Minor in present-day Turkey, about 60 miles southwest of the city of Ephesus that we know from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. And Ephesus is, incidentally, one of the churches, as you will hear. So a reading from the Revelation to John. I, John, your brother who share with you in Jesus the persecution and the kingdom of patience endurance, was on the island called Patmos because the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet saying, write in a book what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamum, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that had spoken to me, and on turning I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands I saw one like the Son of Man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash across his chest. His head and his hair were white as white wool, white as snow. 
His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze, refined as in a furnace. And his voice was like the sound of many waters. In his right hand, he held seven stars. And from his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. And his face was like the sun shining with full force. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We respond to our reading from Revelation with the Te Deum Laudamus, the You Are God, which we shall say together in unison. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. And now let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages B. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. The Collects. The Collect of the Day is the Collect for the second Sunday of Advent. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way of our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And a call it to commemorate Francis de Sales, Bishop, and Jane de Chantel, monastic, both workers of charity. Most gracious God, who has bidden us to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly before you, grant that we, like your servants Francis and Jane, may see and serve Christ in all people and know him as the giver of all good things. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A Collect for Grace. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the prayer for this week, a prayer for guidance. O God, by whom the meek are guided in judgment, and light rises up in darkness for the godly. Grant us, in all our doubts and uncertainties, the grace to ask what you would have us do, that the spirit of wisdom may save us from all false choices, and that in your light we may see light, and in your straight path may not stumble. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world and in every denomination, and particularly those throughout the Anglican Communion, remembering today especially the Diocese of Bauchi, Nigeria, the Right Reverend Musa Win Tula, Bishop. We pray also for our own Diocese of Southeast Florida and our Bishop, the Right Reverend Peter Eaton, and his wife Kate, and our companion diocese, Remembering today especially the Diocese of the Dominican Republic, the Right Reverend Moises Quezada Mota Bishop. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for our own parish family and those dear to them, remembering today especially the Most Reverend Michael B. Curry, our presiding bishop, M.T., Claude, Melissa, Marion, Ruth, Zan, Margaret, Ned, Jim, Fran, D, Charlie, Dennis, Harry and family, Pam, and Tom. We pray also today for our Connect Ministries, remembering especially coffee with the clergy, that newcomers to Good Shepherd may become better acquainted with the rector, clergy, and longtime members and courtyard connection that those worshiping at Good Shepherd may enjoy fellowship with one another following the Sunday service. And now if you'd like to say it with me, let us say together the Good Shepherd Parish Prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, make our parish of Good Shepherd truly a community of prayer and belonging. Raise up in our midst the resources and leadership which will enable us to act upon what you would have us do in this place and in a ministry of love and concern for others. Open my mind and heart to discern what you would have me do. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite your own prayers of petition, intercession, and thanksgiving, either shared with all or held in the silence of your hearts. And I'd like to start our 
open prayers this morning by um, giving thanks for uh, our new rector, the Reverend Dr. Sanford H. Groff, Jr., hereafter known as Father Sanford. Uh, I thought it was a wonderful introduction to him on Saturday when he was presented, and I thought he gave a wonderful sermon or two uh, on Sunday. Uh, I thought that he really um, communicated well what his vision was for our church and gave us a sense of who he was as a person. The, during his institution, we said uh, the bishop actually sang a prayer that is said at every ordination and uh, also that we say during the Triduum, the three days of Holy Week. And so I'd like to say that prayer in, uh, uh, to um, give thanks for Father Sanford. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your holy whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Ah, Julie says, prayer, prayers for my brother Neil, who is having hip replacement surgery tomorrow. I had a, a really nice uh, chat with Neil on uh, Saturday, and I I, I was really glad to see him. I hadn't talked to him in a long time. So certainly let us pray for, for Neil. Let us first pray for doctors and nurses who will be attending to him tomorrow. Sanctify, O Lord, those whom you have called to the study and practice of the arts of healing and to the prevention of disease and pain. Strengthen them by your life-giving spirit that by their ministries, the health of the community may be promoted, and your creation glorified. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And for Neil, may God the Father bless him, God the Son heal him, God the Holy Spirit give him strength. May God the holy and undivided Trinity guard his body, save his soul, and bring him safely to his heavenly country, where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And I have a prayer this morning today. Yesterday was my younger sister's birthday. It was her 60th. So we had a nice Zoom call last night for about 40 minutes and caught up on all her goings about. And she came very close to having her second daughter on her birthday but uh, she, uh, Isabel, was seemed determined to want to stay into the womb and to have her own day. And so it was in the very early hours of December 12th that she was born. She is 26 today. So let me give thanks to Is for Isabel on this, her birthday. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant Isabel as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And as we have been making the habit, let us pray for peace in the world, particularly in the Holy Land uh, and in Ukraine, uh, lessen the sufferings of those in Gaza, and I hope to prevent as much as possible the civilian loss of innocent life uh, as, as that war progresses. And pray also for the people of Israel uh, that Palestinians and Israelis can live side by side in peace and harmony in future. 
eternal God in whose perfect kingdom no sword is drawn, but the sword of righteousness, no strength known, but the strength of love. So mightily spread abroad your spirit that all peoples may be gathered under the banner of the Prince of Peace as children of one father, to him be dominion and glory now and forever. Amen. And now let us continue with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And Joan says, special thanksgiving for my granddaughter, Kelsey, as she is happy and functioning as a nurse aide for the past two months. It's a miracle for sure. Thank you for your prayers. That is such great news about Kelsey. Um, and that deserves its own special prayer, I think. So let us pray for those whom we love. Almighty God, we entrust all who are dear to us to your never failing care and love for this life and for the life to come, knowing that you are doing for them better things than we can desire or pray for. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. And indeed, Joan, I see God's hand in Kelsey's improvement, and may she continue to live a happy and fulfilling life. And I should give one more prayer before we sign off. Um, tonight, there are a group of us meeting to discuss uh, ways to improve our children's ministry and our youth ministry by extension. So please pray for us as we meet at 6.30 this evening. Uh, this is being led by uh, Brad Davis, uh, uh, father of a young family in our parish and a member of the vestry with me. And uh, so, so uh, let us pray for the care of children. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you have blessed us with the joy and care of children. Give us calm strength and patient wisdom as we bring them up, that we may teach them to love whatever is just.